spoiler alert for all those out there who haven't watched Naruto Shippuden. Please don't ruin the fun for yourself. We all have our struggles, and so does Sakura. Before we start this one, I'd like to share a little bit about myself. I don't know if there's a name for it, but I'm a self-styled spontaneous storyteller. What this means is I'm very good at coming up with stories on the spot. In other words, there wasn't much planning in this Sakura rewrite. I only had a week to plan this out, and I've got a job and a life to deal with as well. So it might sound like I'm shooting from the hip, devil may care, but I'd have gotten pretty good at adapting and quickly formulating a narrative. It was the same with the previous Sakura videos as well. As such, I really like the idea of starting fanfiction, because I love having the whole world fresh and at my fingertips to mold. The sky's the limit, and I love every bit of it. Sometimes I don't follow all the way through on this kind of thing, so I'm hoping I can stay on track for the whole of this Sakura rewrite. So far, so good. So what happened last time? The time skip was over, and Sakura had grown far beyond what anyone had expected. Indeed, she had surpassed Naruto, and even stood neck to neck with Sasuke. In helping to save the Sans Kaze Kage Gara, Sakura earned her Jonin status. It's important to note that she received both Chunin and Jonin status in a little over two years. That's a pretty big couple of steps. She was able to heal Kakashi after their bout with the Akatsuki, allowing him to attend their second mission to search for Sasuke. This kept Yamato benched for now. When Naruto got his fourth tail due to taunting by Kabuto, Sakura's attempt to save him clashed the fox's chakra with hers and knocked her out. In their inevitable meeting with Sasuke, I did forget to include Kakashi. I wanted him to share words with Sasuke as well, but in the action I set up with Sakura, I couldn't find an organic place to put him in. We begin this time with the Akatsuki suppression arc. While Tsunade forms and sends out teams to hunt down a pair of Akatsuki that's in the country, Naruto, Kakashi, and Sakura spend time at home base recovering and training for what's next. In canon during this interlude, all we see is Sakura making disgusting food pills in the anime and standing by the wayside to silently support Naruto. While she tries to come to his support in my version, but he actually asks her to leave. He tells her that he's thankful for the support, but he needs unflinching focus, and if he knows she's hiding in the woods somewhere, it'll only distract him. Oh, and this is where Yamato enters the picture for the first time. He's brought in for the same reason as in canon, to help suppress Naruto if he loses control. Slightly dejected, but understanding all the same, Sakura turns to go, stopped only by Kakashi. Kakashi explains to her that in her fight with Sasuke, his Sharingan spotted a lot of flaws in her taijutsu. He notes that her ninjutsu was flawless, and her genjutsu was very smooth, but that she choreographs too much for a user of the Sharingan. Sparing a clone to keep an eye on Naruto's progress, Kakashi offers himself up for sparring lessons against Sakura. My guy and Kakashi might have been friends from childhood, but we never really see them training together. Theirs is a relationship of goofy contests. However, I don't think he can have the Sharingan for his whole life, and grow up alongside Might Guy without also picking up on peak taijutsu. He adopts a stance similar to how Rock Lee would open a fight, citing that he'll be using techniques that she's seen before from other ninja of the village. He tells her that this style of taijutsu is hard on the body, but with her precision, it shouldn't pose a problem if she's able to learn them. Through the course of their training, Kakashi stops several times. He's been using his Sharingan not because she's too fast, but just to guarantee she won't hit him. As a consequence of his Sharingan, he occasionally sees an oddly colored chakra emerge, mixed in with hers. Kakashi actively narrates his martial arts to illustrate more clearly to Sakura how to execute it herself. In a blaze of inspiration, she flourishes with several fast jabs, catching Kakashi off guard and striking him just once in the ribs. He stumbles and coughs, but she's been restraining herself, so Kakashi's not about to go flying. Nonetheless, concerned that she may have bruised some bones, Sakura volunteers some of her medical ninjutsu as an apology. Though Kakashi accepts the offer, he notices an almost searing pain right where she lays hands on him and he ducks away. 
Confused, Sakura asks what the problem is, and he points out to her that her chakra is scrambled with something foreign. Though Sakura is concerned instead that she somehow performed the jutsu incorrectly, Kakashi decides that she instead needs to visit Tsunade or Shizune about the issue, discarding the idea that Sakura did it wrong. He encourages her to return once they've solved the issue. In town again, Sakura discovers Tsunade up to her neck in paperwork and Shizune out on a mission. Where in her past life Sakura would have wavered, she instead decides to take matters into her own hands. We know Kurenai is in town during this period as she's at home to learn of Asuma's fate. Therefore, Team 8 should be around here somewhere. After only a rudimentary search, Sakura spots Shino sitting by himself on a bench. When she approaches, he silently shuffles to give her space to sit and offers a quiet hello. She asks him if Kiba and Hinata are in town as well, as she needs their help with a chakra problem. Understanding the request, he stands and guides her to the Hyuga mansion. There she meets Hinata while Shino leaves to retrieve Kiba. Once all three are together, Kiba remarks that there's something weird about Sakura's scent, which might earn some angry eyes, but also proves that there's something amiss. Sakura asks Hinata to use her Byakugan to look at Sakura's chakra network for irregularities. Upon observation, Hinata notes that there's trace amounts of a different chakra that's leapfrogging through her network. Hinata comments that this other chakra seems malevolent. Shino volunteers some bugs to eat the chakra to purify Sakura, but upon attempting it, the demon fox's chakra weaponizes and vaporizes his bugs. Shino is shocked, as the bugs have a natural resistance to chakra given that they feed on it. Concerned that she doesn't have the precision skill for this, Hinata summons Neji for aid. I'm not pulling these characters out of thin air either. Based on the attendees to Asuma's funeral, Neji must be in town during this time frame. So Neji mirrors Hinata to see what they're dealing with and immediately understands what Hinata wants to have done. Before going into specifics, he asks Sakura where she got this chakra from. She's not exactly sure when it happened, but during her last mission with Naruto. He nods and tells her that the same alien chakra that he sees in her now was also cloaking Naruto during the Chunin exams. This bridges the gap for Sakura, and she realizes its invasive chakra from the nine-tailed fox within Naruto. He explains to Sakura that he can use the Hyuga's gentle fist to shut down her chakra points, but only where this malevolent chakra resides. He tells her that it'll hurt, and that he'll stop if he can't strike it in fewer than ten strikes. But if he manages to pin it, Shino would be more likely to relinquish it with his bugs. She agrees to it, and tells him not to stop at ten if that's what it takes to remove the violent chakra. He tells her to stand very still, as even he is not used to using the gentle fist on a willing person and for helpful cause. On one hand, he could be much more precise with it. On the other, he could accidentally do more damage than intended. On the flip side, Hinata would be gentler, but perhaps less precise. Sakura tells him to go ahead, take his time, and not fear for her safety. After several painful jabs from Neji, he realizes the chakra is almost avoiding him as if it has sentience. Not wanting to hurt Sakura any further, he refuses to continue, insisting there must be a better way. Team 8 and Neji fail in their attempts to quell the Ninetales chakra fomenting within Sakura. Sakura chooses at this point not to tell the others about the Ninetales, unsure about who knows about it and also wanting to protect Naruto. Sore and discouraged, Sakura hobbles back to the village center with Hinata helping her. Hinata asks if Sakura knows where the chakra came from specifically, and in a lapse of judgment, perhaps from her frustration of the situation, Sakura tells her, It's weird. There's never really a time when their friends or fellow villagers discover that Naruto is a Jinchuriki. When the show first starts, this is meant to be kept a secret from everyone which is why the adults that were alive when he was a baby avoid him at all costs. In the anime, it's revealed in episode 102, a filler episode, by Sai. And other than looking at Naruto, no one has any discernible reaction. I thought it was a great waste of character development in canon, wherein Naruto could have broken the news to each one individually. Or even perhaps during the Pain vs. Konoha arc, when he's specifically targeted, we could have various villagers blown away by the revelation. 
Quiet for a while, perhaps not realizing the weight of the information Sakura just gave her, Hinata suggests that Sakura talk to Naruto about it. If the Nine Tails chakra came from him, then he definitely have experience with dealing with it. Sakura really doesn't want to burden Naruto with the knowledge that he accidentally infected her, but she's now growing more stubborn about telling Tsunade. So she agrees, insisting Hinata come along, and of course Hinata gets super embarrassed about the notion. Back at the training grounds, Sakura asks Kakashi if she can speak to Naruto about her issue, detailing everything she's learned. Hinata is dumbfounded, by the way, by Naruto's training regime. Kakashi tells her that if Naruto learns that he allowed the fox chakra to affect Sakura, it would distract him. Not only that, if this affliction is truly the work of the Ninetales, then she shouldn't risk being anywhere near its source. It's just not a good idea at the moment. At this point, Naruto's looking over anyway, so Sakura gets an idea. She asks Hinata to shoot Naruto a hypothetical in an attempt to get the kind of information they're looking for. I'm not going to cover the woes of Hinata's struggle to approach Naruto on her own here. I think we can all assume it was treacherous for her. In the conversation, since Naruto's a dunce and Hinata's ultra awkward around him, she reveals that she knows about the fox, but that it's not really a big deal to her. She even goes on to say it's even more impressive that he's accomplished what he has with such a great burden on his shoulders. Naruto tries to be helpful, but doesn't know how to communicate to her. He ends up splurging about the first time he was trained to use the fox's chakra by Pervy Sage, expending all the chakra he currently has, as this would force out the secondary chakra. He says it's more difficult now, though, because the fox's chakra is challenging, and if he lets it out, it can cause trouble. Part of their conversation, he tries explaining to her what his current training is, arriving at the idea that it's too difficult for her to understand. But of course Hinata understands. Come on! She tells Naruto that she doesn't have any pointers to help him, but is all the same impressed that he can make so many clones at one time. She asks him if it takes one clone to make his Rasengan, what would happen if he used many clones? And something clicks in his mind. The direction Hinata was aiming for was if he could feed more chakra into it, thereby making it stronger on those grounds. But of course we know where Naruto ends up going with it. She goes back to Sakura with what she's learned, and Naruto returns to training. I think it's fair and fun how he learns the look left and right maneuver from Kakashi, but Kakashi wasn't trying to teach him anything. He was just proving he could look left and right at the same time. Because Naruto learned through serendipity, I don't really think it matters who the sources of the hint is from. And this gives more time for Hinata to see and speak with Naruto. Let's face it, Naruto is romantically stunted. He spends most of his childhood in love with a girl who hates him, but slowly grows to love him as a friend. Meanwhile, there's another girl who has to sacrifice her life trying to protect him before he learns that she loves him. It's all very silly in a sort of macabre way. But at the end of it all, Sakura learns what she must do. Exhaust all of her personal chakra so that this foreign chakra is forced out, at which point someone like Shino could destroy it, she thinks. But expending all of one's chakra can threaten their life. She would need someone to act as a battery she could borrow from to keep herself out of danger. Sakura decides it's the best solution they have. She gives herself a day to recover from Neji's attempts to help her. In the very early hours of the next day, she sneaks to Naruto's camp, wakes him, and asks for his help without telling Kakashi or Yamato. He doesn't know why she needs him, but she brings him to another secluded area of the woods away from the training area. She tells him she'll be needing to borrow some of his chakra. Waiting in this little area for them is again Hinata. She'll be able to both track when the chakra is out of Sakura's system, as well as when it's safe to absorb some of Naruto's normal chakra, so she doesn't endanger herself. I just want to say that though this is a Sakura-focused rewrite, the way my fanfiction bends the narrative, it's bound to start including other characters. When I first rewrote this part, I picked Neji because we only have so much time with him, but obviously Hinata was the better choice here. Sakura tells Naruto that she's going to be dumping all of her chakra real fast, and that she'll need to borrow some of his after. She's specifically being shrewd so that he doesn't find out about the Ninetales chakra in her. Luckily for her, Sakura has the Byakugo seal that she can quickly siphon her natural stores of chakra into. 
She remembers all the time between missions or training when she would donate a large sum of her own chakra to feed the seal and expedite its completion. A quick note for this portion of the rewrite. I wanted the fox's chakra to be like a plague on her system. Neither welcome nor ever helpful. Because of Naruto's seal, his body is constantly being drip-fed the chakra. I think of it as taking in small amounts of poison at a time until you're altogether immune to it. Like in The Princess Bride during the Battle of Wits, when Wesley dosed both cups of wine with deadly Iocane powder and survived only because he built up a resistance to it over years. That's sort of how Naruto deals with it. But someone like Sakura, who has never interacted with it before, could have a stark reaction. I don't know how realistic this resistance building thing is. Don't go buying snake venom and trying it on yourself. But this is a fiction, so we can just go with it. Sakura is confident that there won't be any danger so long as Hinata tracks the chakra and Naruto is nearby to lend more. At this point, you might be wondering why Sakura is doing something so reckless. I've got a friend who was one of those annoying kids in school that never paid attention or did homework, but somehow managed straight A's. He was just a natural genius. For example, he had a death in the family one time and disappeared from school for like a month. And when he came back to school, he aced the final exam. He got the best score in our whole class. But one day, he got his hands on beer and ended up drinking himself stupid every day. And this is grade 8 or 9. Not exactly what you'd expect a kid of this age to do. And here I've always thought, why would he do this? He's way smarter than me, and I know the dangers of alcohol. Why would he do this? In his case... He was a teenager, and he was reckless. He just didn't care for a few months about consequences, but it eventually passed. I'm sort of modeling Sakura's decision-making off this. So it's not that she's suddenly an idiot, it's that she's a teenager. We all had our reckless streak when we were younger, so I don't think it's outside the realm of possibilities for Sakura to be dumb for a moment. So she starts to funnel her chakra into her seal as he not conveys the movements of the fox chakra. Because her chakra control is so precise, she doesn't have to focus so much on the process at first. But as she grows weaker and weaker, concentration grows harder. Hinata tells Sakura to slow down, not for the fox chakra, but for fear of Sakura's safety, as Hinata sees her chakra reserves dwindling to a scary degree. Sakura perseveres, trying to force out the foreign chakra. Naruto swiftly lunges to catch Sakura, as enough strength leaves her that she loses her footing. On contact with Naruto, Sakura's survival instinct kicks in, and she unconsciously begins pulling all of his natural chakra in. I don't know if there's an actual name for the differentiation, but when I say natural chakra, it's always in reference to Naruto's normal chakra that's unaffected by the fox. The residual Nine Tails chakra finally leaves Sakura during their connection, rejoining with Naruto and upsetting the seal. Naruto has so much more natural chakra than Sakura that it not only fills her back to full, but also starts feeding the seal like a waterfall, compared to Sakura's water faucet. Their connection is so powerful that Sakura struggles to disengage both physically and turn off her Keke Genkai, as if she's trying to keep a full power fire hose grounded all on her own. Before she knows it, she has absorbed nearly all of Naruto's natural chakra. Sakura has only ever pulled perhaps 1-2% to of his chakra at a time. His wealth of chakra as an Uzumaki is so gargantuan compared to everyone else that a lot for Sakura is practically nothing for him. But now she's accidentally pulled nearly 90% of his chakra, and she can hear Hinata in the distance begging her to stop. This exchange has forced an unwanted possession by the Ninetales, as Naruto is immediately cloaked to refuel his body of the lost chakra. But now the balance between his chakra and the fox's is lost. Just like on the Tenshi Bridge, Naruto begins an involuntary transformation, and this time it leaps forward in progression, starting at five tails due to his own relinquished chakra. Her wits returned and remembering the last time this happened, Sakura runs to Hinata's side and pulls her further from danger. A strange, animalistic exoskeleton begins to form around Naruto as Sakura sees the sixth tail emerge. The fox doesn't have a directive this time, so it's just sitting there waiting for the transformation to complete. 
This buys enough time for Yamato to wake up from the alert on his palm and bring Kakashi with him to Naruto. There's no time for questions as Yamato flies into action and begins operations to subdue the Ninetales. Kakashi checks that the girls are alright before assisting Yamato. With Naruto at six tails, Yamato struggles. It tries to form a biju bomb, but Kakashi erases it with his mangekyo. Hinata boldly tries volunteering to shut down the fox's transformation by sealing chakra points, but Kakashi tells her that the fox is too powerful for such a technique. He tells her to instead go to town and inform Tsunade of the incident. Sakura volunteers herself to go first, and Kakashi shuts her down. He needs her strength on hand in case things get even more serious. Now kept in check, Sakura begins to feel the harsh consequences of her actions really hit. She watches painfully as Naruto loses control yet again, and this time he wasn't even angry. He was just trying to help. She begins to cry for his struggle. Why was she so hard on him when they were younger? How could someone as noble as he like her, only for her to flatly deny him without thinking about the vanity of his mere existence? How could anyone seal such a demon inside an innocent child? But just as much as she's saddened by Naruto's suffering, she's also emboldened to right her wrong. As Kakashi throws distracting kunai in an attempt to keep the fox focused on him, and Yamato is wrapping his ever-changing wood to keep it pinned, Sakura leaps into the fray. She comes from above with one singular fist, hammering down on the fox's head, shattering the skull that's formed around Naruto's head. The impact is enough to stagger the fox and gives Yamato his opening to finish the suppression. Sakura immediately starts healing Sakura even as Kakashi tells her to keep her distance. Still crying but eyes hardened, she tells him that nothing more will happen on her watch. Not anymore. Tsunade arrives, and, and now Sakura has a lot of explaining to do. So this was really fun. I haven't yet branched off so hard from canon like this, but there's a solid week here before they go on to fight Kakuzu and Hidan, so it was the perfect opportunity to fit something in. It allowed me to play with more of the Konoha 11, as well as give Sakura a real reason to care about Naruto. I think this would be a better wrap to the Pain Fight Fox transformation as well, because in canon we kind of go straight from 4 tails to 9 between transformations. Because the fox had no target in the spontaneous transformation, I reasoned that it would be far easier to catch it by surprise and suppress it faster. There was no intent here to make Six Tails look weak, just more of a visual on how easily Naruto could change if he's too weak to keep the seal in check. I've always thought about each tail representing like 11% of the fox's power. At nine tails, that's 99%, basically 100% power. So by this logic, Six Tails should be pretty obscene at 66%. Hinata gets a lot of face time and gets to help solve the problem as well. We get to see both how Yamato is integral to shutting down the fox transformation as well as how the alert seal on his palm works. And finally, it gives Sakura reason to fight for Naruto. This is going to confuse her feelings as well. There's a scene, chapter 319 and episode 74, where Sakura is sitting on her bed looking at a picture of Team 7 and she starts crying. Presumably because she misses Sasuke and wants to reunite with him. That doesn't happen in my version. I wanted her focused entirely on Naruto and how just a drop of the Ninetales chakra could mess with her system so much that it would undo her ability to heal. I wanted as much as possible to build compassion for Naruto here. It allowed Hinata to see what goes on behind the scenes with Naruto and it allowed Sakura to realize just how hard he's trying on the daily just to gain people's acceptance, never mind their love. And now Sakura has to explain both her line of logic and why she was willing to risk so much. Naruto is still out cold and Hinata sits by his side waiting for him to wake. Sakura apologizes to Kakashi for secreting Naruto away. She thought he would outright oppose her idea, but she was also confident it would work. To Tsunade, she has no excuse. It made the most logical sense to wait for Tsunade to be available and just ask her for help. The best medical Kanoichi would certainly have answers. Tsunade, of course, admonishes her for being so dim-witted. In this scolding, Tsunade tells Sakura what the rest of the Jonin already know, how Jinjurikis are used to balance power across the land. Naruto is one, and an unsealed fox would cause mass destruction in the village, much like it did when she was just a baby. Though she was never implicitly told this before, through her knowing Naruto's struggle, Sakura feels like she knew this already. 
She also makes it very clear that the fox can't tell friend from foe, and the innocent bystanders like Hinata could have been very badly injured. However, Tsunade also acknowledges that Naruto lost control in one of the best settings. He was away from the center of population and very near three extremely well-equipped ninja. She makes Sakura promise that this will never happen again and considers the matter settled. Lecture over, she also congratulates Sakura on her creativity, utilizing the Hyuga and Aburame abilities to identify the issue within. She emphasizes that relying on each other is the core of why the village hidden in the leaves deserves protecting. That's the will of fire that herself and every Hokage before her has fought for. It's good that Sakura saw no hesitation in asking for help from even powerful families like the Hyuga. Naruto regains consciousness to a smiling Hinata. He smiles at her too before Sakura hugs him and apologizes vehemently for putting him in such danger. Of course, he blacked out, so he has no idea what she's talking about. Once the dust has settled, Sakura, Hinata, and Tsunade return to the village, and Naruto, Yamato, and Kakashi return to their training. As Tsunade arrives back to town, she receives the report that Asuma has passed away. The remainder of this training time is Sakura training with Kakashi until he heads out with Team 10. Naruto finishes his training very shortly after and they head out to back up Team 10. Upon arrival, Kakashi sends Sai and Sakura to aid Shikamaru. Sakura is a Jonin now, so she has also been taught the Shadow Clone technique. She makes one and leaves it behind to assist the Kakashi Sai team while her actual self goes to assist Shikamaru. I just wanted to kick this in there because, of course, Naruto learned far ahead of when he was supposed to. Ninja techniques like the Shadow Clone Jutsu is meant to be reserved for those of Jonin's skill. Because she leaves a clone, Sakura gets to see exactly how Naruto's Rasen Shuriken works and is also able to give him instant aid. Ino obviously has medical training as well, but who's kidding who, even in canon, it's pretty indisputable that Sakura's better. Because Sakura already got her time during the training period, I chose to leave this fight completely intact. It's one of my favorites from start to end in canon, and I didn't want to mess around with it. So Ino Shikacho avenges Asuma, two more Akatsuki are down, and everyone returns home in mostly one piece. Obviously Naruto's the mostly part of that. I do want to add that there's a moment in the hospital when Sakura's giving Naruto further treatment on his arm and tells him he can't use that jutsu again. I want her to arrive at the same conclusion that the coroner arrives at when inspecting Kakuzu's body. I'm not sure if that's implied, but that's how I've always taken it. Certainly, it'd be a bump in her skill if she could identify that just in registering healing to Naruto. Meanwhile, a coroner has to take a much closer look to identify the same problem. This is less to make Sakura seem gifted and more just recognition of how far she's come with medical ninjutsu. Later, Sakura and Naruto are called to Tsunade's office, wherein they learn that Sasuke has killed Orochimaru. I wanted so much for Naruto or Sakura here, for one of them to think to themselves something like, quote, The other two Sanin are in this room right now. Sasuke beat one. Am I as strong as one of these two? End quote. Obviously, in reality, Orochimaru was dramatically weaker than his normal self, but Naruto and Sakura have no way of knowing this. To them, Sasuke just killed someone equally as strong as Tsunade or Jiraiya. It would be an insane revelation from their perspective that we just don't get in canon other than a couple surprised faces. Regardless, the other two arcs are obviously hyper-focused on Sasuke, so there's not much Sakura does. Even during the Itachi Pursuit arc, there's very little for her to do as she's not a sensory-type ninja. I thought about her feeding Chakra into Hinata or Kiba to enhance their scouting abilities, but ultimately Sasuke needs to fight Itachi, so it wasn't really in the cards for me to include anything extra. And so next video, I'll be fleshing out the Pain vs. Konoha arc as well as the Kage Summit. I didn't get very far along in the story this time, but seeing how he had a training arc, I saw a good chance for Sakura to have her own little mini arc. There wasn't any intention to flip her feelings to Naruto here. I just wanted a more concrete impression on her about who he was. This was also a lesson for her in how different Chakra interacts with each other. And I'm not going to reveal what's coming up, but that's an important detail that'll come again. Maybe because I was able to depart so much from canon this time around, I had a lot of fun with this one, so I'm looking forward to more like this. In the following couple arcs, there are a couple more windows of free time where I can play with Sakura's narrative further. The sky's the limit.